So I love maps, and this is actually one of my uh, favorite maps of all time. It's, it's kind of a mashup between uh, population density and average income per capita. Uh, and you can read it as this kind of ranked list of places, um, places where it's relatively easy to conduct research and, and learn about people's opinions and their thoughts, um, and then you know, play toward places that are where it's actually quite difficult to get insight into the underlying dynamics of the populations there. Um, you know, so as an American, it's, it's relatively easy for my voice to be heard, but you know, a, a, a typical Kenyan has a much more difficult time having their voice be heard and we're learning about their, um, themselves. So we've built the world's largest compensation platform to enable us to be able to better understand underserved, understudied populations around the world. We have the ability to instantly compensate 3.48 billion people uh, in exchange for their data, in exchange for their opinions, and we compensate them with prepaid airtime in over 72 different currencies. And so the bank, the World Bank is actually starting to use this type of technology to try to figure out, for example, what is the price of a kilo of rice in your, a local market in Nicaragua or in Bangalore. The Gates Foundation is interested in whether people are using bed nets and their attitudes towards different types of uh, preventative malaria measures. Uh, we thought it would, might be fun to actually start using this technology to just get a better sense globally of, of what's happening and what are, what are people thinking. And so we've, we've asked now over 5 million people in over 100 countries a, a, lo, a wide range of different questions and compensating themselves with, you know, with prepaid mobile airtime. For uh, NPR's Planet Money show, we, uh, Adam Davidson used this to um, ask people around the world what would people do with $15. And the, and the, range, uh, the range of responses were extraordinary. Uh, from you know, someone in Uganda who wanted to buy a domain name to, uh, to someone in India who uh, needed to, to pay a dowry. So you know, we can instantly generate this type of data and it's, and it's hard not to see um, you know, patterns in it and, and things that are surprising. You know, uh, Nigerians are very bullish about their economy. They love Nokia and things that are not necessarily so surprising such as Brazilians loving their love for, uh, for soccer. When we actually started asking about education, some of the interesting results um, were that you know, people in India were 10 times as likely to say it was education was the reason why they didn't have job opportunities than, than people in Brazil, for example. Now, if you start looking at the, uh, in the realm of nutrition, uh, individuals living in Nigeria turn out to be five times as likely uh, as people in South Africa to buy food based on their nutritional value rather than its taste. So we're actually starting to start looking at outcomes of interest here that are, you seem to be character, uh, characterizations of countries um, in general. Uh, when, we, when it comes to the environment, people's attitudes towards recycling are radically different in a place like the Philippines and Brazil, where people are three times as likely to, um, to recycle and to um, take uh, action uh, to promote the environment than people living in Russia, for example. The gender differences you know, because we can split this in a lot of different ways, but if you look at men and women, um, and you take India, for example, I Indian males are, are three times as likely to watch um, long amounts of television than, than Indian females. And that's one of the other interesting things, is that you can now segment this based on the regional differences. You know, so if you take Indonesia, for example, rural Indonesians um, are something like five times as likely to drink more than one soda uh, in a given day than, uh, than urban Indonesians. And so this was, you know, so we're actually starting to pull out um, differences not just within a, uh, between countries, but uh, within a country. And if you look at these uh, divisive, controversial issues, like in South Africa, 90% of the population believe that they, they should have the right to own a gun, whereas in a country like the Philippines, less than half of the population believes that that's, that's the case. So, you know, stepping back a little bit, there's now 5 billion active mobile subs on the planet today, the majority of which are living in emerging markets, and a large fraction of which are very eager to earn very small amounts of prepaid airtime to have their voice be heard, to be able to participate in this platform. And um, I'm going to conclude this talk by uh, announcing that you know, we, we're now opening this up. So it's not just available to the UN and the World Bank and, and brands, but to the public at large. So you can log in, you can click your country, you can target your demographic, uh, and you can field a question. 
uh, and it will go out to you know, one of these 3.48 billion people who are actually now starting to be able to compensate with prepaid airtime. And so I'm going to leave you today with uh, the question, you know, now that we have the ability to ask you know, virtually half of our species a question, you know, what would you ask? How should we put this technology to use? Thank you.